like any other influenza uh, cases, whether they are H1N1 or not, uh, the younger group of patients and the older group of patients, they are most vulnerable. Uh, the younger group, we are referring to the five years and below, mm -hmm. where their immune system is not so strong, so they are more prone to infections. The same goes to the, the elderly people, you know. They're more uh, prone to it? No, those with, uh, let's say, asthma or any underlying problem, uh, if they get infected, then the risk of getting a more serious infection is higher. So what are the symptoms that we ought to look out? Because uh, just Sonia, I read that uh, now it's 56 people who have died of uh, AH1N1 and two of them are babies who did not show much symptom. Yeah. So what are the symptoms that we need to look out for? Unfortunately, this, uh, this H1N1 infection, they are like any other influenza illness and uh, they are no different from any common flu, which is fever, uh, coughing, uh, running nose, sore throat, headache, muscle pain and so on. And of course, uh, if they are not well, especially in young children, they don't know how to complain. So probably they will be irritable, whingy a bit and maybe intake will be less. So I'm not surprised the very young one, like the two babies who came out in this paper, I think today or yesterday, yeah. who actually passed away where they, do not, they cannot tell the symptoms and they behave probably like any other cough and cold to the parents. So therefore they may be missed and uh, late to be uh, treated. So normally how, how, do, how long does it take for the medical people to find out whether it's AH1N1 or not? And do they start giving the medicine even before they wait for the result? Okay, there is a difference between uh, detecting a presence of an influenza A virus and confirming whether it's a H1N1. What we can do now and what we rely on now is a distinct rapid test kit to detect the presence of influenza A virus. This is the only and the best tool we have at the moment. Uh, the government IMR lab, they can run the confirm confirmation test for actual H1N1 virus. But that will take a long time because they have been overloaded with, with uh, the amount of specimens coming all over the country. So to, if, to say to confirm whether it's H1N1, we can't confirm unless we send the test to the IMR to test for the actual uh, H1N1 virus. But we, get, we will have a high suspicion if the symptoms as well as the rapid test kit tested positive for influenza A, uh, we will probably consider treating them. And uh, the policy keep changing, you know, a uh, few weeks ago it was only to treat if they are severe, then a few weeks later to treat if they are, con they are suspected. And now, with or without, I think I heard from the news today, the minister was saying that if they have symptoms, just treat. So the policy keep changing depending on the situation. As far as I know, the cost is not that, that expensive. If I'm not mistaken, I think it should be less than 100 ringgit. But it's the availability of the test and the, the how accessible to the lab. So if you're staying not in the city where the lab is not directly accessible, then you may not be able to get the test done quickly. 40% of the death is due to delay in seeking treatment. So does that mean that once we our child has some sort of symptoms, then we must rush to the doctor? Well, at the present time, looking at the, the spread of the disease, uh, I think that is the wisest thing to do since we do not know who are the one infected and who are the more serious one. Um, the, those who are actually serious and uh, uh, treated late, they are the one who, has, uh, who have uh, other uh, comorbid problems like they are diabetic, pregnant, hypertensive, obese and, and so on and the very young and the very old but like I said nowadays we don't know how fast this disease spread and we cannot judge by just whether this is common cold and leave it alone and um, those cases where they are more serious usually they are infecting the lungs where they get the lung 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 infection so those are the cases where they can deteriorate they can get sick very quickly so to be sure whether your lungs is affected, you need to be seen by a doctor to decide whether you're just a normal cold or you're a bit more serious than that. So the, the preventive measure of wearing masks, does it help? Wearing masks is actually the main thing is to prevent people from spreading. 
okay. right? We know H1N1 is spread by droplets. Mm. When you cough and you sneeze, the, the, infect, the, the viral particle will be in the droplet. And so if you are symptomatic, it's more important for you to wear the mask so that you don't spread to other people around you. Now, the, the other uh, reason to wear mask is that if you are close contact with a suspected patient, uh, so that it prevents you from inhaling the particles in the air when the person coughs. This uh, virus we know now is spread by droplets. They are big particles. So they can only spread within close contact. Close contact we were referring to maybe a, a few feet distance. So if you are close contact with a person that is suspected to have a disease, then yes, you should wear a mask. See, our government is doing enough to curb this uh, spread or is there more that we individually can do something I think the, the government is trying their very best with the resources we have to cope with this very rapidly spreading uh, disease. I think from two or three months ago, from just a few people coming back in the aeroplane to every school having children spreading, I think the disease has, has spread far more than what we expected. And uh, it's, taking, it's not easy to handle, but I, I believe the ministers, uh, in the Ministry of Health, they are trying their very best to contain and, and control the, the spread of this, this problem. And that doesn't, it doesn't look like that's going to end anytime soon, I guess. <laughs> I don't think so. I, I think it's here to stay, just that soon, after some time, we get used to it, our body immune system will build up mm -hmm. and we'll be able to cope with the, the viral particles. And, but we never know another new virus will come. Yeah, when you mutate, that's what I heard, and that, that one is deadlier. So right now, those people who get the uh, H1N1 and die, are due to the lungs infection? Most of them, as far as I know, they, are, they die of a very severe lung uh, problem. Therefore, mm -hmm. they have problem with breathing and, and the heart and lung going to failure. Yeah. If, the, if the infection is confined to the nose and throat, all you get is just a flu and cough and sore throat mm -hmm. probably. And of course, the fever and, and, and the muscle pain where any viral illness will give you the same. And <coughs> once the virus spread to the lungs, those are the cases where they get breathless, they get very bad coughing, they'll be very tired and uh, they will be blue, they will be cyanose, and of course they will collapse because they cannot, the lung cannot handle. All the children or at least... Well, all the big vaccine companies, they are rushing to come up with the vaccine. Mm -hmm. The last I read is that by end of September, they, they should have a commercialized uh, thing. They, currently, they are doing the uh, uh, trial on, 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 on uh, uh, subjects, healthy subjects in America. So, and they say by at September, they should be pushing out but then, once you give them a stronger whatever antibiotics or prevention, then they will get even... There is always a yeah. risk. That, that, that's why we don't simply, at, at one stage, we don't want to simply treat them with Tamiflu mm -hmm. or uh, the antiviral uh, treatment. Because we worry that the virus may mutate and then become more resistant. Then we have not, no, no more medicine to cure all this. Uh, Talking about the Tamiflu, how, how is it administered to them? Is it it's in through oral? oral. oral. How many dosage and all that? Uh, well, you want to go to the details, the uh, treatment is uh, for adult and children, uh, they are different. But it's a five day course of, uh, of antiviral treatment, twice a day, and the dosage is depending on the size of the person. Is there any cause for us to worry yet? No. Uh, there's definitely a cause of worry. I, I would highly suggest, recommend to parents to keep children away to a public in big crowd, crowded places and uh, if anyone that is suspicious of having flu-like symptoms should seek treatment straight away so that they won't end up with you know, very bad infection and uh, healthy lifestyle wash your hand all the time before and after touching you know uh, uh, before and after eating toilet and so on and of course uh, healthy diet enough of rest and that's the only way to keep your body strong yeah. and healthy. Just to keep the body yeah. immunity strong. Definitely, yeah.